Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to some more Scrap Mechanic Survival. My drone turret is waiting, waving hello to me, actually. Hello, Mr. Drone. Okay, well, today is the promise day that I will do the tutorial. Uh, I don't know what to call it, but basically I'm going to be remaking this whole thing in a better fashion. I <laughs> just took the time to grind a whole bunch of materials that are being created over there in the craft bot. And I even actually upgraded, or really, it's really a downgrade, but I upgraded my mining vehicle so that I could get some stone so I can make some glass so I can make a whole bunch of tubes. And I was testing on different designs and I came up with a simpler, way easier design to do things. Um, and this is basically it. I'm not even going to show it off. It just works. Right now, it's just a V with, uh, what are these called? Drills. And then a little catching guard for a little bit of seepage prevention, I guess, if you want to call it that. And then I can make it bigger. I actually need two refineries and more of these things because I collect so much, so many resources, it just overfills it and I have to wait around for it to do all of its refining before I can even move on. So that's cool. It works. And it got me a lot of stone or scrap stone. I didn't even like do all of the stone that I wanted to because it was taking so long. I just wanted to get some glue and go on. So got lots of stone in here being crafted into both sand, glass, and concrete. I also collected some glue, so we're all good on that. Um, let's grab these that I just made for later reference. And I'm just going to stick with what I have right now. I will come back for more and get more materials as I need them, but I just want to get started. Also, <laughs> you guys really like to call me out for my ability to overcomplicate and overengineer things. Get out of here. Let's pretend you guys did not see that and go <laughs> back to what I was just saying. Um, yeah, so I do love to overcomplicate and overengineer things. So you guys were saying that this method was way too complicated and I could have just used some other things. And you guys are right. Honestly, this is way too complicated and took me way too long. I'm not even going to tell you about what I just did to make this work. But the problem was the sensor right here was sensing the water that was getting shot down and causing it to flick the bits really like really bad so let's pretend that this is fully grown I'm actually going to take some fertilizer um, let's say that this one got fully grown and got harvested I mean it's pretty easy to see how it harvests the sensor just tells it to go and then let's say that this one and this one did or this one did hold on now yeah. oh, whatever it's fine so Oh, it didn't work. Okay, well, it usually does work. Um, I don't want to say it's 100%, but there are definitely easier ways to do this. And as you guys can see, I just planted more. It got one, it got this one too, eventually. Oh, it kind of overshot a little bit, but that's okay. So, basically we're going to be doing a better version of this and make a whole tutorial on how to make an entire factory. Hopefully the thumbnail looks great because I'm going to make this thing look good. I'm going to take the time and actually make this look good. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I haven't torn it all down yet, but the first thing you want to do is find a spot that you want to build all the crops. So, of course, you're going to need grass, like that's, you know, basic farming stuff. I would use this area, but that is for this auto farm, and I'm not about to move this. So, <laughs> we're just going to take this small spot, like right around here, I think... It doesn't have to be too close to this wall. Well, I guess you guys aren't going to have this wall here, but hopefully an open spot, a nice, good looking spot. I don't think it matters for me because of this tall grass. Like, I don't really care how good it looks, but you're going to want to first do your first plot of nine. So you're going to want to have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. Hold on a second. Is that 10? I, I miscounted. Okay. So nine boxes or nine plots of dirt right here okay this is going to be one um i guess you can say one block of potatoes this will get you whatever nine times five is 45 ish potatoes which is good but that's not all you need we're going to move this or expand it to be four i guess four sets so we're going to have another nine blocks right here i believe it'll be like this um well actually hold on a second Okay, so once you have this plot of land, you can actually expand it. Okay, so the way pistons work is they have 15, or level 5 pistons can go up to 15. That means one piston can range two 
plots of nine. So if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, that'll be a full 15-ish blocks if you like place the piston in the right place. So that means I can expand this farm out by this much, I believe. Do I want to? Uh, yeah, I think I do actually. Three. I can just tell this is going to be a longer episode, so I hope you guys are uh, <laughs> prepared for that. Okay, so four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. That also means that I can expand out the farm over by three more this direction too. So what I'm gonna do is just grab some more dirt and put that down. Okay, that is a four square nine set, or I guess, yeah, four sets of nine square uh, gardens, which each will be covered by one vacuum pump or whatever you wanna call these. So one will be in the middle. What I'm gonna do is actually set that up right now because I don't want to um, screw that up. I wanna make sure I get everything right. So. This is the proper height clearance. So what I'm actually going to do is be lazy and just what you guys are going to need to do is build up uh, about, let's say, let's say from the ground, which will be right here. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So 12 blocks. Okay. And that's. And then you just place the pump kind of facing downwards at about like, I think it's like 10 blocks or so. So that's, yeah, that's even. So that's, the pump will be at 12, 11, 10 blocks. So you can place the pump, the bottom of the pump at 10 blocks. Or can you, you can actually go, yeah. Yeah, okay. So the bottom of the pump will be 10 blocks high. And so that will be the dimensions of how like the minimum height that you can use. I would probably prefer to stick with the minimum in case if you go too high, it can't uh, suck up the plants because it's too high. So you're gonna wanna build up by 10 blocks and then start moving out, building up, uh, I guess we'd call them support beams or cross beams. Um, this isn't perfectly built right now, but I'm actually gonna in fact make this into an entire 10 block high wall. That's just gonna cover this whole farm because I want to make sure this is the most protected thing. I will be upgrading this material to probably tier three concrete. Probably. I believe that has the most durability or tier three metal. I'm not sure which one does. It's going to be 10 blocks high and then you're going to want to find the middle of your farm, which is, or the middle of each, I guess, section of nine that I said. So this set, the middle one is right here. You're going to want to build a little bit out, oops, a little bit out and then put that right if i can get it angled bottom of that right there okay so i believe if i come up to the middle of this and look directly up oh it's not completely up out yet so one more out there you go so that is one two three four blocks out and then there's going to be a piece and then we're going to do i think two blocks i think it might be another four blocks uh, actually, it's going to be five blocks, and then you're going to grab another vacuum pump. We're going to just, in fact, steal this one, like so. And then you put that down, and there. You already have kind of a template of where your vacuum pumps are going to be. So these will be the only stationary objects, or I guess the most permanent fixtures. So you can make this look pretty. I'm actually was going to use extruded metal to make it look more factory-like, if that makes sense. So I'm actually going to be that guy and just just cover this with extruded metal so that it looks pretty like uh, actual support beams. And then we're gonna, I'll prettify this later, uh, in, but in the same episode, so you guys will see what it looks like all prettified. But for now, it's just gonna look like this. Okay, so those are the first two. And basically it's just rinse and repeat for the next couple more. So you just come up here of, uh, one, two, three, four, and then I have a couple more pumps in that chest right there. I believe right here, hold on a second. So it's in the middle, top middle. Actually, it might be off by one, I think. Yeah, it's off by one. So <laughs> scratch that, uh, make it six blocks wide. There we go. And then that will be the number of the height. So that's the height, it's 10 blocks high, 
there, there, and then that's that. And then I think it will probably be another six blocks on this side too, to be honest, because I think that's how like dimensions work in this game. Um, but let's see. So the middle of this one is right here, and then you look up, and so yeah, go five, six, and then you take your vacuum tube right there, and Bob's your uncle. Okay. This is what the setup is going to start looking like. You're gonna to wanna to do it again for the next one. I'll just do that really quickly. And there you have it. You have all the vacuum pumps properly set up. I'm going to connect them together to make them look a little bit better. And I'm actually gonna cover them completely up with, uh, what's it called? Um, this rusted metal, or not rusted metal, but this metal extruded thing. But later, once I get some more, I just need to build some more in the uh, crafting bot. But for now, we're just going to have this skeleton floating weird looking thing right now. Because the point of this tutorial is to show you how to do it, not how to make it look good. So, moving on, we're going to be transferring over this little mechanism into a simpler terms, a simpler way that doesn't use nearly as many timers and sensors and stuff like that. But it'll work. Okay, so. So once you get all of those in place, like we just established, is you're going to want to find the very corner of your farm. So this is my corner that I want to start everything at. Uh, and you want to make sure it's kind of, yeah, pretty much, um, I guess you can call it corner. I don't know the exact word. Adjacent? Not adjacent. Diagonal to, I guess is the word, to um, the farm. And get two level 5 pistons. You're going to want to need level 5 pistons to fit all of this. And basically what I have right here is a little test to kind of see if it's even possible to do what I want it to do. <laughs> and um, if it doesn't work, then we'll figure out something. But basically what we're going to have actually is a sensor right here facing downwards. Okay. And then we're going to grab a logic gate. Excuse me. And... There we go, and just connect that up. And this is a test. So this is gonna be a test to kind of show you guys how it works. And you're gonna to to make sure this is set up to like four or so, so that when you plant one, it goes on. If you destroy it, it goes off, if that makes sense. So if you have this properly set up, that means each of the four corners should be visible. Let me Let me grab some of these seeds real quick right here. And so this far corner and this far corner and this far corner right here. So these are going to be the very edge cases. So you want to watch out for the edge cases of your farm because those are where the most things will go wrong is in the corners and maybe somewhere on the sides too, depending on how it goes. For now, we'll just test it out. We're going to show you guys how to test it out and see if it works for you guys or not. You want to make sure you set all the ranges to the maximum range on the pistons. You basically have... Uh, switches connected to a piston that's facing out towards the long width or long ways of your farm and then another piston on a block that is facing um, you know, towards the other side so width and height and whatnot you know so basically the reason why I have it like this is so that this sensor or spud gun eventually will be directly well it's actually just gonna be a sensor but it'll be facing directly over the place where the plant is where it will be seen so then if I, um, well actually what I'm going to do is move this into a more visible spot. But, so if I turn it on, it goes off once it like, you know, stops seeing a plant. And then once it gets to the very edge of the corner, oh, it saw something for some reason. I'm not sure what it saw actually. Hold on a second. So if that's happening for you guys, you might want to look into getting a flatter piece of land or seeing exactly what could be the problem here. I'm not entirely sure myself, to be honest. Okay, so this is one of the many things that could go wrong. Okay, well, <laughs> I fixed it. I just replaced the dirt with uh, more dirt, I guess. I just took it off and put it back, and so now the sensor doesn't sense it for some reason. However, that does bring up a good, a, actually an excellent point on how this can also go wrong. So, because this is on a piston, and if you put anything heavy on this side, pistons will start to tilt downward. So like, say I grabbed a water cannon and then just popped it on there. 
you can see this piston, even though it's level five, it started to tilt down a little bit. If you have enough weight on it, I mean, the goal is to keep it lightweight. It will start to uh, mess up with the sensing of the uh, ground properly because it's, you know, sensing the ground, not great. <laughs> so essentially what one way to solve this, there's probably much better ways like putting the sensor somewhere else. But for me, what I like to do, and it actually kind of looks cool too, is have a guide rail. So like, say you built up right here, all the way down this way. Okay, and so now, if this, if that happens, you have this going along a guide rail this whole time. Um, if that kind of makes sense, I don't know how to describe it, if that's probable or possible. So basically you wanna have that for both. So you have two rails sticking out coming here. So now you can also have the same thing or the same like dealio from on this side too. So then now if you put this, oh, this way, you don't, need, you don't need this railing to be so long. It can just be like that if you want, but I like to have it stick out just a little bit, just in case. And then if you press out this way, it's also falling along the guide rail, and now it will sense this thing at the very last corner. Yep. And then that means if you go, I want to do this again. <laughs> the reason why I had it so long was so that I could like not mess up stuff, but actually what we can do is just put another guide rail right here. Okay, well, I just did some more testing, and uh, one thing you have to watch out for is building your farm on uneven land like I have, like, <laughs> kind of like an idiot just a little bit, to be honest. And yeah, so be watch out, watch out for that. Make sure your land is flat, because if you add the guide rails, like now that I've added the guide rail, it does not sense this one over here, but it does sense that one on the other side, I believe. And one way to fix this, is I believe is is going to make this lower. So what I'm going to do actually is just pop this whole thing off real quick, and then make it slightly lower. See what happens. Okay, so I honestly do not want to move this whole farm. So I've made a couple adjustments. Uh, you guys can do this the same way. You can either do it the way I showed you earlier, but if you happen to be on uneven land try to see what happens if you move the sensor to this side if that makes sense so it should um basically it's basically facing outwards and it's not going to see down so i think so far this is working i could be wrong you know i could have really screw this whole thing up anyways again but so far i moved everything down and now it seems to be working um, let's see what it looks like over here, even though it's not on a guide rail. Okay, so the four corners, if this one works, then it's good. Okay, well, that's all four corners, and they all work, which is great. I don't think you'll need the guide rails for this method, but I would put them because it looks cool. <laughs> and anyways, um, okay, so that is the mechanism. As you guys noticed, I actually replaced this block that was on the piston connected to the sensor was actually a spud gun now and that is just because i wanted to put it there before i started building on too much so basically what you guys have to do next or should do can do want to do if you're even following along is put a spud gun on this piston put it right in the middle so that there's space right here at least a one block space for this sensor to you know sense empty space or not and have a level one sensor that's you know you can put it anywhere but as long as it's facing down you'll be fine uh we're coming down here and facing outwards towards emptiness is good okay watering we're moving on to the watering system we have the spud gun set up and that will be connected up to the system soon but i just want to get all the bare bones down first so what you're going to want to do is grab a small pipe not this this is a large pipe but this is <laughs> all i had on me at the time so i'm just going to make do with what i have and what you want to do is grab this pipe grab a set up something like this or so and then i'm going to do that and so it just looks cooler than just putting down blocks i'm going to put a bearing on it and then set up a pipe or a watering gun right here okay it looks ugly yes however 
this is important for the future as I'm going to need to now remove a controller. You will need a level three controller, I want to say, level three controller. You can put that anywhere. I'm actually going to put it, I wanna make this look cool. So I'm gonna have the controllers and everything else facing out here. So what I'm gonna do actually <laughs> is build a wall right here. And I'm going to hook up a controller within this wall to make it look more embedded. That's not facing the right way. I know this is actually dangerous when it comes to tape bots. They can shoot the controllers and that's actually what happened to my track for my drones. As you can see, it's missing an entire piece. That's because a tape bot shot the controller <laughs> shot the controller off of it causing it to just mess up and so I just ended up deleting the piece or moving it somewhere else temporarily so yeah so be careful of where you put this you have to make sure it's nice and secure if you don't want it to be exposed you can just cover this up and put it all internally within the walls but for me I'm not about you know practicality I'm more about cool lookingness I guess not really anyways you want to make sure that this sec system is connected to your other your walls and stuff to your main base so that you can have all the con controllers able to be connected so you can pretty much automate it from anywhere what I'm going to do is actually grab some wires to make it look cooler you know because you know looking cool versus actual practicality I know I can use any block but I'm going to use wires okay well, I'm going to move off. Well, I'm going to place down these wires right about here. All right. And I think that should mean that they're connected now, hopefully. And I'm going to just move all this logic and stuff somewhere else so that it won't look as weird. And you can also probably, you probably should use pipes for this to make it look cooler, but that's not what I had on me. And I keep on ranting about making things look cool. But anyways, so moving on, this should now be connected to the controller so if i move this you can now connect your controller to one oops wrong, wrong one control connect your controller to both pistons so this piston this piston and then the little bearing that you had right here okay and i guess it's not really a little bearing but it's a big bearing and the first thing you're going to want to do to test out is move your bearing to like say 30 degrees or so I'm going to reverse it so that it's facing this way. Okay. That way it's angling more towards this plot of dirt that is connected to, or that will be growing. So what I'm going to actually do is test it out by hooking this up to, uh oh, okay. <laughs> now it's all connected to the base. Okay. So what you're going to do is just connect this up to the thing right here or any water container. You're going to want a water container for sure with a vacuum pump that'll constantly suck up water in case you guys didn't know that already, but that is just anywhere facing in the water. And because it's using a water gun, you don't need to connect directly connect the water pumps to the circuit. So we can just have it anywhere in the world and just stick this anywhere. Okay, so what I've gone and done was first make a little window right here. I mean, it's not really a big deal. Was just connect a button to the pump. And now if I press this button, it shoots out water and we're gonna see where it landed. Okay, the water landed this trial run right here. And hopefully that will be consistently. I mean, that's gonna be the hard part is making sure that it's consistent. So what I'm gonna do is just spam it a little bit. Okay, it seems like there was no off track or anything else that didn't hit any of these other spots. I wouldn't complain if it did, but since we're only gonna be shooting this once, we wanna make sure it's gonna sit here and hit this plot of dirt 100% of the time because there might be that 1% of 99% that makes it not aim in the right location. So we're gonna just, we just made sure of that, okay? Everything seems to be set up okay and properly, and we're good. Okay, so now we're just going to the logic part, which is gonna be a little bit easier than that complicated piece of crap that I had over here. So now you're gonna take your level three controller, which is right here, I placed it there. I'm actually going to put a switch right here. In fact, what I'm gonna do is delete all this and then make this whole thing into a window. I might make it like armored glass so it's a little bit more you know, protected from tape bots, but we'll do that a little bit later. Okay, so what I've done was put this window, I actually added a little bit of a ceiling because I really hated the look of 
this stuff just floating there. And I'll add the rest of the ceiling later. I might even change the material if I don't like it because it's starting to get a little bit trippy when you get far away from it. But it's okay. It looks a little bit factory-like, so that's okay. So what I've done actually was connect a switch to this controller and a, a logic gate to that sensor. And what I'm about to do actually is to help with testing is put more plants here, here. Um, we're going to erase that one. I don't want to. I don't want to trigger a raid on accident, to be honest. So we're just going to stick with this right now because that's that's what we got. So I think what we're going to do right is make sure that first of all, like I said before, that angle is 30 degrees, and then this controller will first start off by moving all the way down the row. So once you start this loop, this will be a looping cycle. Is it goes all the way down once, and then. It senses that, okay? So then you're gonna move it again up to say three. Okay, so I have some bad news for you guys. Um, this isn't, without making it over complicated, <laughs> I really, really, really want to make it over complicated, but because of the way the pistons are set up, this final row of crops is pretty much useless for us. Like, yeah, the piston will not reach over here. You guys probably are already yelling at me when I was planting this in the first place. So, thanks for the heads up. But now I realized my mistakes. And all you have to do, I guess, to fix it is just technically get rid of this last row. So, instead of it being a 6x6 six six box, it would have to be a 6x5 box. Meaning you'll lose, uh, whatever, 5 times... Uh, six is amount of spuds, which really, I don't know, because this is wasting a whole three plots of dirt for this vacuum pump, and so I don't really like that at all, to be honest. So we'll see how this goes when I test it out, but I don't know. I'll still look into other ways to make it so you can do a full six by six without making too much more complicated. We could add another piston, but then that means we can expand it to even more than six by six. We could do like a 10 by six or something like that. But we'll see, we'll see. So I guess for now what I'm gonna do is just do the finish the tutorial, mess around with it off camera and then come back to you guys. But basically what you have to do is just erase this and uh, apologize to yourself for wasting that much time. But other than that, uh, doing the controller setup like I keep on trying to do, <laughs> this is the third time of me trying to do this, is very, very simple. All you have to do is go make sure that you start off with zero, zero. You want to put on a loop or put, I don't know about the loop part yet, but we'll see. Start off at zero, zero. And so when the switch turns on, you want this to go immediately down the row at the slowest speed. And then once it gets to the end of the row, it'll move over by three, which goes to the next row and then come down this row backwards, which is basically going from 15 to zero. The first piston, now you know, the fi first piston is set up here and the second piston is there. So it's length by width basically so that's how you know and pretty much rinse and repeat so it goes from 15 to 0 if you want to like a shortcut it'll be 15 15 0 0 15 15 0 0 15 15 okay so that makes sense so basically your length piston would be 15s would be like two 15s two zeros two 15s two zeros and then two 15s I don't know if that's actually the way I want it to work yet, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll test it out. So then we're going to have zero, and then we're going to have zero, zero, three, three, six, six, nine, nine, twelve, twelve, and then we set this back to zero. And then this one back to zero. I want to say that could be right. So if we turn this on, so instead of the two 15s at the end, I just basically made this into zeros at the end because it's only going up to 12 and not going up to 15. If we had one extra, if we just had one more extra, we would have been able to have a full uh, six by six square. But now we cannot do that. So, so far so good. I believe the end is going to get a little bit dicey, so what I'm actually going to do is just speed it up to test it out. Um, we'll slow it down again later. Oh, I don't know what just happened there, but... Okay, so it goes forward. 
goes so 15, then 3, and then 0 here, and then 6, and then 15, and then 9, and then 0, and then 12, and then 15, and then back to the start, and rinse and repeat. Okay, so that is the pattern you want. So I'll just do a quick, I guess, screenshot type of what this looks like. You'll have your length piston just going 15s, zeros, 15s, zeros, 15, zero. And then your width piston will be zeros, three, six, nine, twelve, and then zero at the end. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Just follow that and your piston will have a good pattern and make sure it's looping and at the slowest speed for me because I want to worry about precisions later. So once you got that and you're going to, after you remove this row because you know, it won't fit on the piston, unfortunately, if you guys actually have a good way to make this fit on one single controller and one like these two pistons, please let me know and I can fix that. But right now I can't think of anything and my brain is kind of fried anyways. So anyways, moving forward, we are going to be doing what the planting mechanism is going to look like, which is a pretty simple logic, but it can be complicated if you don't follow, I guess, slowly. So I'm going to try to slow it down for you guys on this part. So each block or plantable block has one, I guess, block area that you can use that can trigger when it's supposed to be planted. So by that, I mean like for this first piece right here, if we had a, oh gosh, um, if we had say a hole or something, it could be a hole, it could be a extruding stick, it doesn't really matter, it's just something that's noticeable by the sensor. So we have a block right here sticking down, meaning this is where the planter should check or this is when, when and where the planter or this little system right here should check if there is a plant there. So one right here, and then if you skip two, so one, two, and then another one right there. Actually, I'm going to, need to finish this roof real quick. I believe just like I have for this right here, every one, two, three, every three blocks is when the block should go. So the first block will be right here. And then we'll count one, two, three. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is not the, I guess you could say the easiest or most resource efficient way. Um, because I have these pipes so low to the ground or too low to the ground and not up one higher, this sensor is going to automatically, I guess, sense uh, this tube right here. And if I had these little sticks any lower, it would have clearance problems with this. But actually, if I just move this down a little bit, so to there, and then keep it tilted, but maybe even tilt it even further, we actually might not even have this problem at all. So let's say we make it 45 degrees, and then we connect this up, and then we'll test it out real quick. Okay, so we got some, we got this down and angled, and this is now here. So then if we press this button, let's see, did it get the watering or did it go through the ground? Okay, it actually watered it. Okay, so previously I was having problems because the water would go straight through this dirt and go into like through the ground because it was so low to the ground last time, if you remember that last episode. But at this angle, it doesn't do that. So that actually solves my problem. So we can actually continue on a merry day and finish doing this little setup that I was doing before without using colored sensors. So my idea was actually just to make this into a colored sensor. I don't know how to describe it, but basically what it does is just, you just paint these a certain color and make this upgraded to level five. And that way it won't sense this at all unless you paint it the right color. So yeah, but this is another way to do it. It's a little bit more resource efficient. And so we'll do it this way. So if you're doing this the exact way for me, instead of having just one block down, have two blocks coming down, and in fact, what you also could do is invert it and have the ceiling all the way down here and just have one block missing. It just depends on how you like it, really. I can show off both, so I won't do it right now, but I'll test out both off camera and then see what you guys like. I actually lied. 
<laughs> I lied about the spacing between because this was three in between because I actually had a space between each of the um, things. You guys might have noticed that actually, so thanks for catching that, but I actually caught it now. So sorry again to make you guys erase what you guys have been doing, but I will say it's, you know, better this way so that we actually know what mistakes were made and how to fix uh, possible, like, potential mistakes. So instead of three wide, it'll be two blocks in between. So then now it's like that, so it'll be two blocks like this. And basically, you're just going to uh, pretty much rinse and repeat the same thing. So I'll make a note in the post editing to not do this, um, actually. So I'll actually make a note to you guys telling you guys not to follow this and actually use two blocks. And then when I mention this, I'll just, you know, call myself a goof and whatnot. So now for this one, it's going to be a little bit tricky because you need a way for a block to stick out when in fact you don't have the ability to make a block stick out. So then, actually I think this will be fine because the pipe will actually never, or the sensor will never come to like this area right here. In fact, it'll just be, yeah, so one, two, blank, one, two, and then, actually yeah, so that's actually fine. In fact, if we really wanted to, we could just make lines all the way across this, but that'll just be a waste of space. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. So moving on, we're going to say that for these to come across uh, these little vacuum pumps, you're going to want to just build down and then out a little bit so that you can have the clearance and you won't have an issue with it. So that won't mess up with the sensor, I do not believe, uh, because it will never have to sense anywhere over here and if it does it will still be the same good spot anyways now let's just finish this off and move forward see this is why I need the farm that's exactly why I need the farm you know save that cow and got you know got rid of that farm bot which is pretty good or hay bot so I'm out of ammo this is why I'm having problems oh sorry mr. cow the turret you know the turret makes no judgment Okay, I have set things up pretty reasonably, I think. This is actually not as, you know, pretty as I would like it, so I might even use a different material or something, or paint these, or use glass, I don't know, something, but it's okay. Honestly, it has a little factory feel to it, so that's, that's gonna be okay. And now I'm stuck under here. So now, what we're going to do is put all this back of course, and then show off or tell you how to make this work. So as you can see, this sensor is set to one right now, and it will only sense, I'm actually going to attach it to a uh, logic gate right here, I have a testing logic gate, and we're going to have this come off for now, but well, this will come into play later. So if I turn it on, it flickers every time that um, a planting spot comes up. So as soon as it comes up, oh, it seems like that one wasn't set up properly for some reason. I don't know what, which one that one was looking at actually. Hold on, what? Oh. So if you guys remember my guide rail system problem that I was having, it was because of this right here. So we're going to actually just <laughs> move this out for now and then um, test it out again. Yeah, so my guide rail system was just in the way, but now in this test, as you can see, it was, it will actually blink every time it comes across a potential cropping spot or planting spot, I guess you can say. And you can probably understand what's going to come on from here if you guys don't know anything about this. Um, so basically, it's really simple. The way this works is all you have to do is just connect um, this to a, so let's actually embed this into the wall to make it look a little bit cooler. So if we have a gate sticking out here, and then we'll have another one there, and then let's have a third one just to make it look a little bit cooler. Okay, so what we're gonna have is have this sensor, this top sensor, connected to an AND gate so that you know that it's on. This bottom sensor is gonna be connected to an NAND gate, so that'll be not so that you know when it's off. And this sensor will be the, I guess you can call it the output. So this will, this middle output will plant a plant 
once this sensor says, oh, there's nothing there, so when this is on, and when this sensor says, oh, you can plant right now, so you should plant. So I uh, will, I guess I can demonstrate it, but as you can see for some of these, is having the output come on. Um, because there is nothing there. I'm just trying to, I'm just kind of like trying to think about how to explain this properly, but I guess watching it work is probably a little bit easier to explain it than actually doing it. And so let's say that there was actually a potato right, uh, let's say right here there's a potato and then there's another one that's grown right there. So you will see that this will actually tell it not to plant once it gets to those two potatoes. Yeah, so it skipped one. Yeah, so right there it just skipped those two. Okay, so it's working. That's good. I do think I should probably put it on some sort of guide rail because, what's the word? It seems to be kind of like jittering around a couple times and when it starts shooting, it'll also jitter around some more too. And I don't know if I like that. So I'll have to figure out a good efficient guide rail setup. But before all that, I think I'm pretty good for now. So moving forward. Oh gosh, what's going on over here? I think these cows are just triggering my stuff. Come on now. I'm, they're wasting my ammo. That's why I'm building this factory. Okay. So does that make any sense? Yeah? No? If it doesn't, let me know. But if it does, leave a like or something. I don't know what to say. So <clears throat> that's a pretty simple system. You guys might be asking, what about when it's coming backwards like this? Will it see the things and get triggered? The answer is yes. However, because of the location of some of these, um, it shouldn't be completely triggered all the time and only like want to get shot as soon as it comes across these little pillars that are facing down right now. So when it's going across diagonally, I kind of set these pillars up so that it wouldn't have that problem. However, I might need to change it around because uh, I wanted to make it look nice for these like tubes, like having these little things across the tubes, but I might have to, you know, nix that little cool idea because it might actually come triggering on some of these little tubes in between when I don't want it to. But we can always test that out too at, at some point. Okay, moving forward, we're now going to both close this up, but then set up the fun stuff, which is what I really like to do, is the logistics system. So what I'm going to have to do is figure out a great place. I haven't thought about it all yet or really thought it through at all, but that's the most fun part about it. What I, what I do know what I want is I want my ammo to all show up. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out a good spot to put it. Should I have it all be in my base? That's so far away though, that's the problem. I think I'm gonna have all the ammo just kind of come into a ammo room, I guess. I'm gonna build it out right here. We're gonna have this be kind of like the container for all the ammo or, or I guess the room of status, turret status room, I guess. I don't know what to call it. So we'll just take this flat land, we'll expand it out some more. We'll move this pump to a more uh, hidden location, I guess, and then figure out how to set up the logistics. Okay, so I'll see you guys when I get there. Okay, well, <laughs> this is the ammo room so far. I haven't finished the logistics yet. I want to kind of record some of that. But basically all it is is just nine ammo crates. It's not as much as I was hoping I'd be able to fit, but just the logistics for the pipes themselves and the cost for these pipes has just been a bit high. So I think I'm gonna stick with nine for now. I think I have enough turrets and I should be fine. So I'm not gonna to be too worried about that. I'm gonna move this here, that's, that's too low. But yeah, so this is the ammo room. And so now what we're gonna to need to do is figure out <laughs> how to split all of our uh, pipes from this farm into all of these pipes for here. So I kind of did it from building it backwards and forwards then forwards and backwards. So this will be interesting. I'm kind of excited, but I think I like this design so far. It looks very factory like so that was the that's the design goal I'm going for. So hopefully we can I don't I do not have enough pipes for this at all. So this will be this will be very interesting. Okay, so up here this is going to be kind of the interesting part. I have chests that are already filled with seeds so far. I'm going to need definitely I'm going to need a lot more of these. Oh goodness. Right now we have these four vacuum pumps and we're going to need to connect them all together into the same logistics chest 
but also split them up at the same time. So instead of having, I was thinking of having each four go to like a different, uh, you know, like section of the guns, but I think I want to have them all go um, be connected all together so that I can have, you know, spread the load essentially and not worry about missing out on some or, you know, getting empty, running empty on one of them when I could have had another. It's, I don't know, I just want to get it all together so we can have it all unified basically. So what I'm going to do here is put a chest there and then fill the rest of the chests up. So let's just do this one step at a time, I guess. Okay, there we go. So what I've done was just put the chests all in this weird order or facing, I guess, towards the ammo place. And what I'm gonna do for these back two right here and to connect basically the whole system together, all I'm gonna do is just put some pipes in between them like so, pretty simple. And oh, not long enough. Oh gosh, I hope it doesn't take two. That would be quite unfortunate if it took two. Oh no. Oh, that's rough. Okay. Uh, hmm. Actually, hold on a second. We might be able to fix this. So if we actually take this up and then rotate it the other way, like so, will it fit on it? No, it doesn't. I thought it could. I thought it was an idea, but it actually looks better this way too, act anyways, but I'll just do that to this other one as well so that it's, uh, I guess, even, if you wanna put that word out there, or I guess, symmetrical. There we go, so it's symmetrical. That's what we want, that's the word. Okay, so now we're gonna have to actually just, ugh, do a weird little thing. So I'm actually gonna just split it in half, so I'll just have one like that one like that and there we go so now they're connected since you can't do just one in between I just want to split it evenly in half now those are like connected now I just need to connect these guys now those guys are connected and now what we have to do is figure out a good way to look good while also getting these over to those six right here so one option is to actually immediately start splitting them by taking some chests like so. So if we do this, we get a split, and then we can take another chest. This one is filled with junk, and do that like so. We get another split, and then we'll have to take some more chests. Let's see. Like so. So that'll be one, two, three, four. I need nine. Oh goodness, this is going to take forever. Okay, well, I'm off to get some more chests. Okay, <laughs> I have all the chests here. I It's not even on the sides because I need nine and that's, uh, if I only have two rows, so I'll have to have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the way that's gonna have to split, which is unfortunate, but that's okay, honestly. I think I can have this side be a little bit longer so I can have these be for the top row and the outside. So like what I'm gonna have here is this one is gonna go on the outside, like so. I'll just take it this way. I get to save some tubes, which is good. <laughs> take it that way and then bring it. Oh, okay, this is gonna be interesting. There we go, okay, that's connected. You can see it all glowing blue and stuff, that means it's all connected, which is beautiful, but I have a lot more to do, so let's just <laughs> get this over with. I just realized actually that I was miscounting the number of tubes or chests that I would need, which is kind of good because I save, I can like save these chests, but also bad because I wasted a bunch of resources on them. But I actually have more, I have one, two, three, four, and then five. So basically you have an extra hole every time you have like one at the end. 
So what I can actually do is just say, so I have five on this side, and then, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five on this side. So that's a total of 10. So I can have 10 ammo containers with just this amount of chest. So that's good, actually. So that was just a little note. Uh, we're going to get back to the time lapse now. I just wanted to tell you guys about that in case you were, you know, screaming at the TV screen or whatever you're watching. Okay, that was the last pipe connected of this massive spaghetti monster. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, that was fun. Not really, but I got it done and that's all that matters. <laughs> I'm out of materials, so I won't be able to finish off these walls or anything like that. I will not be inviting tape bots or farm bots to this place anytime soon, so I'm not going to be worried about getting destroyed by like a random pot shot or something like that. But... I do want to at least get this thing tested and working and started before I, you know, end this episode. So, what we're going to do now is basically test, uh, exactly what I want to do is actually I'm going to test out the, if the potato gun works properly by using this water cannon. So if I connect it up, it should, oh, I, <laughs> I don't know why I did that, okay, so I press this. And this should eventually water this whole area, hopefully. I think this is at its slowest speed. Okay, good, because I want to make sure it's nice and precise. I will add more window to this side as well, so that it can look pretty cool as well. That'll be nice. And then... Okay. So going across diagonally, I think it does get a couple shots in, but I don't think it's actually that big of a deal, to be honest. I will be adding lights in here too, pretty soon, but right now I wanted to see if this thing works. It looks like... Let's see... Okay, that got there. Looks like this whole place has been watered. Or, yeah, of course we're going to be missing water on this part, so if we take that away, it'll water that, and this will harvest that. And so now, awesome! Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is actually working. So now for the final touches is basically the harvesting portion. And I left a bunch of junk in one of these chests. So I'm going to go look for it real quick. Well, we're going to just use this level two sensor and put it right. It should work. So if I just put it like right here, it'll work fine. I think, I think I'm not entirely sure, but what we're going to do is just put that up here, right? And then we're going to just set it all the way up to eight. I know it'll, oh gosh, it was not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to set these to suck, not blow. And so let's just do that. I pressed E on all of those. So now those are all set to sucking motion. And now that this went off, I just got a huge frame drop for some reason. I have no idea why. I have a feeling it's because of this, to be honest. <laughs> that makes sense that this would cause a massive frame drop, but Still, it shouldn't be that bad. Okay, so hopefully I can get that cleared up at some point and my frame drops will, or my frames will come back eventually, I'm hoping, because there's no way that would just cause that much of a, of a problem. Let's see, actually, hold on a second. I have an error. Shape does not exist. Uh, let's see. It says script game vacuum shape does not exist. Interesting. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm going to have to exit this game and then come back and see if it still works or not.
Okay, we've loaded back in. And I think my frames are going to be a little bit better. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a little bit laggy now because I'm just loaded in. But for now, we should be good. Uh, but for some reason, it's not. Okay. Well, load to self, this place, this, <laughs> this machine is a massive lag fest for some reason. I really don't know why, but it is. So let's see. All these arrows should be pointing up. I think there's one that's not pointing the right way, but that's okay. We just need to press that, and now it's all good. And now all of these are all good. I don't know why this is causing so much lag, and I actually think I figured out a better way to connect these pipes in a more efficient manner, but, I mean, uh, it's fine. It works. It's connected to all of them, I believe. That's all nine of them connected, and we're good. Wow, I didn't think this would lag so much. I don't know why. Okay. Well, what I have just did is actually... Uh, what's the word? Removed all these pipes from here, and now my frame rate is actually fixed. So yes, uh, note to self, a bunch of pipes causes a lot of lag. Okay, all of these are now filled with seeds, as you can see. So now all of the potatoes will be forced to go into here, and the seeds will be forced to go into there. And now all the potatoes will be available, or all the, um, you know, all the potatoes will come into here, and I can come and see how these are doing without having to go around and looking at all of them directly. But now we're going to have to induce the lag again and connect these all back up. I'm going to hope that they come up with some sort of optimization or some sort of fix for this eventually in an update, but I doubt that they're even thinking about this in uh, their, their current developments right now for Axelot games. But we'll see. We can always hope. And let's get this last one connected right now. And there goes my frame rate. Okay. It was fine when all of these were facing down. So like I had when I was there was no frame rate problem when these were all coming facing down here. So for some reason it just doesn't like the fact that it's facing up. <laughs> I have no idea why. I might dive into the vacuum code to be honest to check out why that's a thing, but for now we're just going to just induce the lag. Huh. Interesting. You know what it is? I literally... That's that's so weird. But it kind of makes sense. So what I just did was just disconnect these two chests. And now this system is lag free again. But once it has this weird loop into it, it's completely lagging. Like, completely. So I don't know if I messed up a connection around here. I doubt I did. But I think having this circular loop isn't the way to go just for frame rate <laughs> just just for the sake of my frame rate so we're gonna have to pretend that those don't exist for now and i don't think putting a chest in between here will actually help at all will it let's see yep it does okay so note to self if you guys are doing this too do not have these connected or else you will not have <laughs> any frames okay but now that we've got that figured out and established we're going to happily put some potatoes into here so let's just put 50 so, so it's 117, okay? That's what we have to do. So we have to turn on the pump. I moved the pump out here. Hopefully a tape bot or tote bot is the word. Won't come get to it because I don't think, I don't think it will, but it could, you never know. So, so you can see it going off. It's watering all the dirt again. It doesn't really matter for now. What we're gonna just do is just connect this output to the gun right here. Okay. Okay. All right, now let's see what happens when he comes across. Oh, it, got, it, hit, it hit some already. Okay, so it's coming across fine. Okay, it's perfectly fine. This is working almost 100% perfectly. I'm getting some bad errors on the log right now, but that's okay. We got unauthorized farm detected. This is only a level three raid, and I don't think it'll be level four if it gets any more. Crop value of about 36, and it'll probably be like whatever this times 1.5 is. <laughs> that's amazing. We got it. It's working 100%. It works. Okay. All you have to do now is just wait for this to grow and then wait for it to harvest. And once it's all harvested, let's connect this up too. There we go. Once it's all harvested, 
it'll start filling up our containers automatically. And what we can do then is just connect all these up to the individual turrets that I have. So let's move this one here. So let's just do the important ones first. We're gonna connect that big one up later when we feel like doing high level raids again. But for now, we're just gonna have each one on their own respective gun. And then we can actually split the potatoes for this one. I actually haven't updated this yet, but I'm going to probably move this to a singular, what's it called? A singular, um, like that. A single gun instead of a double gun right there because it's just kind of wasting potatoes, I think, in my opinion, but it might not. Okay, it seems like I had a weird misfire there, but I'm not sure if that was just because of lag or just something that went wrong. Yeah, there's something going wrong here. Oh, I know why. <laughs> because I took away the dirt in that area, that's why. Okay, let me go fix that really quickly. Wow, I can't believe actually something that I decided to make with you guys' help. You guys did give me a lot of good ideas on how to improve my last design. So I'm so grateful for that. So thank you. Uh, let me, where's this dirt? Where the heck is all my dirt? What the heck? But yeah, so thank you for the ideas and the tips. Uh, especially, I forget your name. I'm sorry for not calling you guys names out. If you guys want me to shout out your names, I'll do it in later episodes. But for the one, for the idea to put stuff on top for the sensor that just basically does the end and NAND and then just compares the two so that way you don't need to worry about it but you know, my dirt should be in here it's not but yeah so thank you for that idea I'll go look for my dirt get this patched up and then I'll come back later tonight we're gonna have to deal with a level 3 raid without any potatoes there it is okay dirt is in and I'm going to finish off this window right here like so there we go. And that's connected by wire to the base. And let's add a finishing touch. Okay, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous, honestly. This is amazing. It's beautiful, it works, it runs. It's not wasting any more ammo since I've put that there. I've got some more spuds in here, which is good. And so the prob, the question is, oh my gosh, it's still doing it for some reason. Why is it not? What was it just? There's something that it's sensing that it's not. Okay, so I don't know which one it is, but it's one of these corner ones. I'll check it out, and then when it comes back, I'll tell you guys to remove that corner, and then we'll be good. Okay, I think it is this one right here. This, like, this crossbar, when it comes across here, it sees the crossbar a little bit and then shoots it, which is fine, I guess. I mean, it's not fine, but, like, it's fine that I removed it. It doesn't look as good anymore. But it'll work for now. I mean, that's just <laughs> this little thing compared to a whole system like this. So it's awesome. This factory is now in shape. It is 100% automated. I will never need to touch this ever again unless I want to... I don't have any spuds. It's all in here. But unless I want to either uh, add more crops, which I do not want to do. Let's see. Does this do it? Oh, it does. Okay. I see what's going on here. So it's actually not that one on the side, it is this one on this side. So let's just put this back and then remove these right there. And then we'll see if it works. We don't need this metal anymore. We're going to probably just cover this whole thing in concrete eventually. But yeah, this looks like a beast, honestly. I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna say I'm proud of this. This is amazing. Thank you guys for your help. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys tonight for the raid and then hopefully for the harvest. Okay. Everything is just about set up. And all I gotta do is turn on my defenses now. And then I'm gonna move, I moved these ramps out the way. Uh, and it looks like it's a bunch of hay bots and tote bots, which is normal for a level three. Nothing interesting here. This is all good, except these guys are trying to come for me, so I'm gonna lead them hopefully this way. Well, hopefully. Come on now, thank you. Thank you, okay. Well, that's good. That guy is taken care of, so is that guy. And let's just grab those real quick. 
And I think that was all of the raids. So that's going to be, that was wave one. So they're not, they're going to get harder, but it's really just going to be more hay bots than there are tote bots. So that's not a big deal. And so in all of that, I only used about, so about 10 here, 10, 20 there, and two on this one. That's actually not that bad at all, really. Okay. Wow. Progress. Like that was good. Okay. Well, now all you have to do is just wait for these to grow, see this thing harvest itself, and then it'll be exciting. So let's wait for that real quick. Oh, there goes one. It just, a whole row just grew, I think. Let's check this out. Okay, those are growing. Interesting. It looks like it's not sensing some of these. What's up with that? Wait a minute. Oh no, I might, I should have tested this out. Okay, interesting. So it looks like this, these pipes aren't actually sucking up the ones that I need them to suck up. I don't know why that's the case. I mean, it is planting actually pretty good. It is sucking up the ones and planting them very well. But I don't know which ones it needs to be looking at for it to suck them up. I mean, overall, I'm going to say this is a success. I'll play around with this off camera for sure. And I'll let you guys know what to change next episode. So stay tuned in that in order to get all of this. Because I'm pretty sure they should have had a six, like a, a three block radius unless they're so high. They're like too high. And now it's like a suck up those i'm not sure i'll have to look around some more i'll keep looking at it playing with it and then we'll see i'll get back to you guys but until then i hope you guys have a great morning afternoon night or evening and i will see you next time